everybody, it's Maura Devora, and today we're going to hear a story that is called The Last Pair of Shoes by Sashi Friedman, and it's a story all about Ahavat Yisrael. Shalva is an old shoemaker. Rain or shine, you can find him sitting at the edge of the small town where he lives. He is poor and doesn't have his own little shop. All he has is a small wooden table with a few very old tools, but he is the best shoemaker that there is. Once, when the weather was bad and business was slow, I stopped by to say hello. Ah, Shalva greeted me happily, wiping his big stained hands on a dirty oilcloth. You are in no hurry, he asked me. No, not at all, I answered. Good, he said, pulling a little wood stool out from under his table sit. It was cloudy, but there was no rain yet, so I sat down to chat with him a bit. Shalva loves talking about his life in Poland when he was very, very young. He has many interesting stories to tell. Did I ever tell you the story of the last pair of shoes? No, no, I said, eager to hear all about it. And so that afternoon, he told me this story which you will all hear now. It was during the war and Shalva's father had gone off to fight. Shalva was the oldest of six children. Times were hard and there was barely any food. There was almost nothing to be found in the market and only those who could pay a high price were lucky enough to buy some flour. For months they had not been able to even get sugar. Yes, it was an unhappy time. The children didn't know the taste of something sweet. They woke up hungry and they went to bed hungry, dreaming of food. Shalva's mother had to take care of the little children and so Shalva, being the eldest, went out to work. Before the war, Shalva's father had been a shoemaker. Young Shalva could always be found in his father's little shop, watching how his father cut and sewed and hammered away until he produced a fine pair of shoes. So with his father away, Shalva went into the shop and tried to make shoes himself. He had everything he needed, sheets of leather and rubber, wooden pegs and spools of thread. He worked for many long weeks until one day he came running home excitedly with a new pair of shoes in his hands. Look, Mama, he cried with joy. I've made a pair of shoes, just like father. The children squealed with delight and Shalva's mother clapped her hands inside. Oh, thank God, thank God. We shall now be able to buy some flour. Shalva sold the shoes and with the money, he bought a small sack of flour. For the first time in many weeks, the children had some bread and they didn't go to sleep hungry. From then on, Shalva worked all day and laid into the night making shoes. One morning, Shalva came into the shop and he noticed that there was only enough leather to make one more pair of shoes. The war was dragging on and on and there was no way he would be able to get some more material to make more shoes. Oh, he thought sadly, soon I will have to search for work again so that we will not go hungry. Shalva looked down at his feet. His shoes were already very small on him. He had blisters on his toes and his feet hurt. I will make this last pair of shoes for myself, he thought, and he set to work. He measured his feet and using his knife, carved out, carved out soles from the last piece of leather. He worked until late in the afternoon, and at last the shoes were ready. Shava was cleaning up when suddenly a man entered his shop. He was wearing a coat, but his feet were bare and scratched and bruised. Hello, he said. I need shoes. How soon can you make a pair for me? I am so sorry, said Shava. I have just finished making my last pair of shoes. I don't have any materials left. Oh no! The man looked like he was going to cry. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I have come all the way from the next village 
There is not a shoemaker to be found. Everyone is out of business. You are my last hope. I must have shoes or I will not be able to go to work and my children will be so hungry. Just then the man noticed the new shoes that Shalva had made. They seemed to be his size. Please, he begged, let me have these shoes. Shalva felt so bad for the man, but what could he do? With his father away, Shalva had to care for his family. If he gave away his new shoes, he would be unable to go out and find food for his family. Please, please, the man pleaded. Shalva thought and thought, and at last he had an idea. Let's share the shoes, he said. You will use them when you go to work, and when you are done, you will bring them back to me so that I can use them and I go out to work. Wonderful, what a wonderful idea. The man's eyes lit up and he hugged Shalva. I work in the evening and during the night. I have to go out into the forest to collect wood for heating ovens. It's so dangerous and my feet are cut on the thorns and branches. The hardest part is when I have to stand on the icy riverbank at the edge of the forest to chop the wood. There are a lot of trees there, but without shoes, there is no way I can stand on the frozen ice. Now I will be able to continue working. Every morning, after I sell the wood, I will return the shoes to you so that you can go out too. Shava was glad that he had found a way to help the man. He carefully and cheerfully took the new shoes and gave them to the man. The man slipped his sore feet into them. They felt smooth and warm on his cold feet, and they fit perfectly. Thank you, thank you, he cried. I will bring them back in the morning, he called as he left the shop. For many, many months, Shalva and the man shared the shoes. The man used them by night, and Shalva wore them during the day. Since he could not make any more new shoes, Shalva took his tools and went from house to house, mending and fixing people's shoes as best as he could. At long last, the war ended. Sadly, Shalva's father did not return home, and no one knew whatever happened to him. Shalva had to continue caring for his family. One morning, the man did not come back with the shoes. Shalva waited all day, and he began to worry. He hoped that nothing terrible had happened. A second day passed, and a third day, and still the man did not come. Shava was stuck at home. It was chilly and rainy, and there were puddles all over the streets. He needed his shoes. By the fourth day, Shava decided to go to work barefoot. He could not stay home waiting forever. Then, just as he was leaving the house, he saw the man approaching. Where have you been? Shava asked. The man smiled. I wanted to repay your kindness to me, so I traveled to the big city and bought some leather for you. It is here in this package, he said, pointing to the bundle on his shoulder. Now you can start making shoes again. Shava was so excited. He hurried into his shop with the man. Together they opened the package. There was enough leather to make plenty of shoes. Shalva went right to work. You can have your shoes back, said the man. I will buy a new pair now. You really saved my family by sharing your last pair of shoes with me. I don't know what would have happened to us if you hadn't been so kind. The man returned the shoes and Shalva made a brand new pair for him. Then he blessed Shalva and he left. Wow, what a lovely story, I said when Shalva finished his tale. Are you still friends with that man? I said. I never saw him again. Why would I? Shalva laughed. I never see any of my customers again. The shoes I make last forever. Really? Do you still have the shoes that you shared with him? Sure, Shalva smiled. He pointed to his feet. They are old and out of style, but they are strong shoes and I have never stopped wearing them. I keep them, he added softly with a twinkle in his eyes to remind myself that you can never be too poor to help someone else in need. The end. So always remember, Ahavat Yisrael.
to love your fellow like yourself.